I'm a registered dietitian. I'm an exercise physiologist. I'm a cardiologist. I'm a clinical pharmacy coordinator. I'm living with heart disease every day. And I live with coronary artery disease. I had my heart attack um, just three days before my 56th birthday. So I was 55 when I had it. It was very shocking to me. We hadn't realized that that was a problem I might be facing. When I think of support, I think about a ladder. You might be up on a ladder and it may be wobbly. And if you don't let people know, your friends can't come hold the ladder and keep, you know, keep things steady. So uh, support to me is letting those people who are in a position to help in whatever way know what issue you're dealing with. I turn to my minister and I turn to the church congregation. Letting them know garnered all kinds of support. When I've been in the hospital and have just come home, people have brought me food. People call, I get cards, and then people say, how are you doing? And they really mean it. My Women's Only Cardiac Support Group is fantastic. There were other people there sharing my same story. I wasn't the only woman that this happened to. You can also talk about your fears there. They've had those same fears. They, um, they can give you ideas of how they've addressed them. Uh, and again, it's a place where you can give back. You, your story is important to them, just as their story is important to you. And I also have some very close friends. Uh, my dearest friend, particularly when I've been very ill and struggling, has accompanied me to doctor's appointments to be another set of ears to help record things that I might not hear or remember and to bring some pretty pointed questions at times that she sees that she wants to address. And she also has taken it upon herself to develop an email list of friends and family of mine that are spread far and wide. And different times when I've been hospitalized, she's been the one that has sent out the updates and kept people informed as to what my status was. When your friends are offering support or when you ask for support, they're often so grateful because they don't know what else to do for you. And they worry about that. And when you say, can you help me with this? They are so grateful when they know this is something I can do. It's interesting when you're dealing with doctors, I see some people kind of going in to see their doctor and they almost seem to be challenging them as if, you know, as if they've gone to a fortune teller. Well, I'm going to see what they can tell me about myself without giving them any information. That's not fair. Your doctor needs the information. So if you're feeling fatigued, if you're having pain, you have to make a serious attempt to let your uh, health care providers know. The other thing is, if you've been non-compliant for some reason, own up, you know, uh, because your doctor might think, this didn't work. I have to increase this med, I have to change this med, and you might just be able to say, you know what, I didn't take it for three days last week. You know, yes, you didn't take it, get over it, get back on it, and uh, but be honest. Um, I think that if you have a health care provider that you don't think is hearing you, uh, is giving you short shrift, is not listening to your struggles, you can, you can tell them, I don't feel I'm being heard. Do you understand how important this is to me? If they're not responsive to that, I say, look for another provider. You can find the doctor who is the right doctor for you. I did have an experience with a doctor who, whenever I wanted to tell any part of my story, would just say, I'm asking the questions. I'm asking the questions. And I didn't feel like I was being heard. And I told him, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with how 
we did this. I'm not sure you understand how this is impacting on me. I found another doctor in the same field who wanted the information that I could provide. Doctors are busy people. They're constantly being pushed to uh, see more patients in less time. So you have to be prepared when you go in and be organized. I keep notes that I take with me to go to the doctor's office and, and sometimes I give them to the nurse who's doing the initial details so that she can put them with the chart. The doctor can maybe know what I'm going to be asking before he or she comes in. Um, sometimes the nurse can answer certain of the questions for you. If you forget to ask something when you're there, jot it down either for the next time or call, call up the office and say, oh, I forgot to ask this question. Can somebody address it for me? Can you try and get me an answer? They're more than happy to do that. They really are. For myself, sometimes I don't ask for the support I need. Sometimes it's a sense of guilt. Um, oh gosh, here I am again, you know, in this situation, needing this support. You know, I have friends get upset with me because sometimes I go to the emergency room on my own. And then I, I let them know, I'm in the ER. Why didn't you call me? I would have given you a ride. Well, I didn't want to trouble you. I'm single, so um, I don't deal with this with a partner. But I think some people who have a partner um, may rely on that partner for all of their support. That's a huge burden to carry. Now that partner may be so glad to carry that burden, but you can lighten that partner's load. You can re redistribute some of that burden by finding the other places where you can get support as well. I'm Joy Throm and I live with coronary artery disease.